the woods. Mm -hmm. Literally. I threw them all out. I threw them all in the creek, in the woods, fucking everywhere, just like hucking them, <laughs> hucking them, oh throwing God. them. Like, right? And I'm just like, fuck this, what fuck the this. Fuck? So the next day, I come in, and all of them are in Pambro's on one of the tables in the kitchen. Oh. Right? This, I must have rolled in like around 10, 9, 3, yeah. 10. Somebody had already been there. Somebody had already figured it out. Somebody had already found them. Somebody had already picked them all up. And so I'm, I walk in, and Lucy's there, and she's like, I don't know who would do such a thing, but somebody must have broke into the restaurant last night and threw all these bugs <laughs> into the creek. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, my God, someone <laughs> broke in last night? <laughs> you know what I mean? And I just, pl- I just went with it. I was like, I didn't lie to her. I just didn't admit to it. I yeah, was yeah. like, wow, that's terrible. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was, right. that was terrible. So, but yeah. Uh, what ended up, how'd you leave? Did you get fired or did you work? No, I, I get, it's funny. During the middle of a, uh, a, a lunch, brunch service, another restaurant tour called the restaurant and asked to speak to me. So the GM comes over and she's like, such and such is on the phone for you. I'm like, what? So I, I'm at the pass expoing. I pick up the phone and the guy's like, hey, this is Rodolfo Costella, Italian guy, mm-hmm. right? He's like, we hear you're looking for a job. I'm like, what the fuck? You're calling me at my job to ask me if I want a job? Yeah. Absolutely, I like the style. <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah. absolutely, I like how you roll. Like, yeah. oh, you're 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 no bullshit. So I was like, let's meet. I'm like, I'm in the middle of service. Let me call you back. So I call him back. I go meet with him. Now he's got a restaurant in Malibu on Zuma Beach, which is like this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful setting. Um, literally, like the only thing that that separates you from the sand and the water is a like little one lane street. So I go meet with them, and he tells me, you know, what what they're doing, what they want to do, um, understands my pedigree, understands where I've been, wants to really change this restaurant. Um, they want to do a fine dining thing, they want a bistro, they want a bar menu, and then they have events. And I was like, all right, this is cool, the setting's cool, restaurant's way nicer. These guys are restaurant guys. They yeah. got like sick restaurants. They don't have that weird duck shit on them. Yeah, there's no like weird duck shit. Like, there's no purple fucking yeah. curtains everywhere. Like, it was weird, bro. Um, but yeah, so they, like, I, I took a job with them. I was yeah. like, all right, this is what I want, this is what I need, or whatever. And um, and, and I started with them. How'd you break the news to. Uh... I didn't do it. I, I literally came in. I was like, guys, I was like, this isn't working for me. I was like, I'll give you two more weeks. Um, if you need me to help, if you need me to help find someone, I will. I was like, but I'm out. Yeah, sorry, I'm out. Yeah, how did they take that? They, they were, they're kind you of know, used they, to were, it, they huh? were used to it. No yeah. one lasted there. Yeah. you know. And the poor guy, Salome was his name. He, like I said, he was the, the the Mexican AM sous chef dude, um, who had been there forever. Yeah, you know, he he was able to run the restaurant. By himself, anyway. Yeah, they didn't need a chef. You know they what I mean? Just kept they just chefs. kept hiring chefs. You know what I mean? They, and and the restaurant had been around for so long. I mean, I got I got a New York. I mean, uh, an LA Times right up when I was there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was a it was a terrible one, but I got one while I was yeah. there. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, they just they they don't. It's not a chef place. It's a mm-hmm. romantic spot. You go there because it's a beautiful place, and that's that. Um. Yeah, so this next spot, you know, ended up becoming a, um, a, a, a pretty dope little a little landing pad for me. Yeah. And taught me how to run a business. And okay. That's, that's when I really got serious about understanding P&Ls, understanding food costs, um, understanding labor costs, understanding what it takes to run a profitable business. Yeah. Up until then, you know, granted I'm still super young at this time, um, I had had no experience with actually reading a profit and loss statement, mm-hmm. um, those types of things. And that place, you know, I had uh, a commission that was based on how well the restaurant was doing financially. Yeah. So my motive was to make sure that we were in the black, you know, and uh, and that's where I met my wife there. And like, you know what I mean? I learned how, yeah. to, I learned how to cook for, you know, four or 500 people at the same time and being able to... To, to run a kind of fine dining, fine dining spot and a bistro spot and, and understand it's okay to put fish and chips on a plate. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be, you know, etc. 
it doesn't have to be covered in, in all the truffle. Like, yeah. It doesn't have to be that. Um, and we came up with a bunch of really dope dishes there. Um, and it was just really, really well executed, simple food. Mm. Um, and we were going to the farmer's market. That was the one thing about uh, the end of the seventh grade spot that I was introduced to was going to the Santa Monica farmer's market. Um, so when I took this new spot in, in Malibu, the sunset, you know, I brought that with me. Yeah. I brought that, you know, okay, every week we're going to go to the farmer's market twice a week and we're going to buy everything from the farmer's market. You know what I mean? So, like, they bought us a truck and we started going to the farmer's market and the farmers on the way back up to Ojai or, or um, uh, I can't think of the, the, the cities north of, of Malibu at the moment, but on the way back they would stop and drop off whatever they didn't sell yeah. at the farmer's market. So we're buying, you know, heirloom tomatoes, cheap, 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 like all those types of things. Anyways, um, it was just a really dope experience. Yeah. And then um, uh, that's where you met your wife, you said. Mm. And she, what was she doing when you got there? She was, um, she was the events director got you. for the restaurant. And yeah. we were doing, um, they were doing rather a, a high volume of weddings and parties and and uh, you know rap parties and all these you know all these things because it's, it was such a just such a beautiful place right yeah um, so they were doing a lot of that stuff so when I came in there you know they had, the the chef had quit or fired or I don't know what happened um, but you know she was working off of like two chefs priors catering menu so all these other chefs were just having to adhere yeah to whatever menu this other guy just made up yeah you, you know what i mean like, you were probably the first one that was like fuck yeah this. i was like listen i was <laughs> like this is what we're gonna do yeah call all of your events and tell all of them that the food that they ordered for their event is changing yeah I'm sure she looked at you like she looked what the at fuck were you yeah, doing? yeah that was our first I think our first real blowout yeah um and uh, I was like yeah I'm not cooking this food there's no recipes there's no there's nothing all you're telling me is that you know it's it's this with this and this yeah. that's all you're telling me yeah, you're not exactly. telling me anything else yeah so how do I know they already had the tasting and what I'm going to give them is different are they going to be pissed off if I give them my in, you know interpretation interpretation of, what, of fuck, yeah. what it is so I was like this we're going to change it we're changing it. I'll yeah. give you menus for everything. Give me a couple days. I gave her all new menus. I was like, this is what we're doing. Schedule, reschedule tastings for all these people. And I'll do a tasting personally. I'll go out, sit down with the customer, cook their food, tell them what they're going to do. And I'll do every one of them with you and for you. And she's like, she finally was, she was like, like, this okay. guy's legit. Yeah, he's legit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I did that. You know, we recreated all the catering menus, which there was a lot of them. It was like 10 or 11 of them. It was a lot. Broken up into what? Well, we had... A forty-five dollar menu. Okay. We had a sixty-five dollar. Yeah, okay, menu. gotcha. We had a, a ninety-five dollar <laughs> menu. You know, and then we had a bar mitzvah menu. Then oh, we okay. had like, we had like, you know, all these different. You know what I mean? We had a, you know, all these different fucking menus, and um, and I just streamlined them all down. Yeah. You know, and I was like, listen, if we're gonna make money, because I was making a cut on the sales mm-hmm. of food. I was like, I know I'm gonna make money, and I was like, this is how we're gonna do it. And I, and I restructured the whole thing, and she restructured her whole thing, and together, like, we rebuilt that whole system. Yeah. And um, and we worked really well together, and uh, and that's kind of, like, how our relationship started. Yeah. Um, but it, it all started by revamping this restaurant together. Mm-hmm. That wasn't then, that wasn't ours, but we treated like it was ours. And then you sort of knew, like, this person's passionate, I'm fucking passionate. Mm. You know, we're falling for each other, like... Yeah. You know, when did you make the decision, like, it's time to fucking leave here and go, you know? Yeah. Um, we got serious about, like, becoming a thing probably about, like, a year or so into me working there. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, she was seeing someone, I was seeing someone, and, you know, neither one of those things were working out, so we ended up, like, you know, going out a couple times and, like, really, you know, like, all right, you know, I did you, you did me. And um, so the whole time that we are like that started to happen we started to talk about doing an event company together yeah because we were doing these crazy events so we started talking about doing an event company that just did tasting menu dinners where her and i went to these really high-end place houses and, and and spots and and did these tasting menus for these people as i was already doing for some i mean our clientele at this restaurant mm-hmm. 
was Sean Penn, was Pink, was De Niro, was, you know, all the the celebrities that are in the movie business, they fucking live in Malibu. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they're all coming down to the sunset to sit at the bar and, you know, have a margarita and eat fish tacos. Because no one's bothering them. Exactly. It's just a little small neighborhood spot, but it just happens to be on the ocean, the most beautiful spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Um, So anyway, so like, you know, I caught myself like cooking for, you know, well-known celebrities in their homes. I was like, wow, this would be a thing. Yeah. We could put a little business together where you and I go out and do these these types of things. Um, So uh, as we started brainstorming what that could look like, we came up with the name Cholula. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it was Cholula... What was it called? Tut. I think we're calling it Tulula under twenty. So it was twenty guests and less, mm-hmm. and we would come and do an event for you, super high end. Yeah. And I would bring two or three people. She'd bring her front house staff. Yeah. We'd have someone on sommelier, and we would go do. You know, we wanted to go do these events, and that's what we're doing. Um, so um, we got serious about moving on after a trip to New England to Rhode Island, mm-hmm. um, and that was uh, that was. Um, so you met her family. That's when I met the fam, right? Yeah. And I was like, I had never been north of New York. That's fucking intense, I had bro. fucking no idea what New Englanders were like. Uh, who the and fuck I, is this yeah. guy over here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've met my father-in-law. He's, he's, he's no Mr. Joke. Maurice. Yeah. Right. And uh, um, so, yes, yeah, so we come here. And, like, we come to, uh, to Providence. We die in a couple spots. And, um, and you know, the whole time I'm here, I'm like, yo, there's no way I'm leaving Malibu. My fucking neighbor's Billy Bush. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm living in some dude's super high-end guest house. Mm-hmm. You know, on the beach. I'm like, I'm not leaving that to move to Providence. Yeah. It's just not happening. So then we take a, a trip to Newport. And um, if you've ever been here, and if you've ever been to uh, to Newport, you know that that bridge is a mesmerizing drive. Yes, it is. Um, and uh, and it really, like, wow. And then we got into this little colonial town, which I had never seen cobblestone. Like, yeah. You know streets and like old colonials i never seen that before and that was like really cool to see and I was like wow we you know we could and I saw it was it was uh it might have been the first time we came might have been the summertime all the all the yachts were in the water yeah that's true right and you drive down and you see this and you're like man people of mega wealth live in the town yeah right and that's what I was like wow we could really do what I want to do yeah, what I've trained my whole career to do, or if you will, you know. And um, so we go back. We find a place on Craigslist. We're looking to buy a, a, an income property. Just so happens that apartment has a restaurant with it. And um, one thing led to another. And, and like, fuck it, let's do we it. We fucking picked up and moved here and, and bought um, 464 Thames Street. Gotcha. And that became to Lulon Thames. Yep. How long from buying the building to getting it open? I moved out here. I was out here for probably like six months, um, and she stayed there um, working because she had a bunch of events that she needed to be a part of, uh-huh. um, and then train the new people and so on and so forth. I was able to train the new chef pretty quickly, and uh, so I came here, you know, broke the kitchen down, broke the dining room down, redid the floors, painted. I was out here for, for a number of months before she came out here. It probably took me about s- six or seven months to get the restaurant open. Gotcha. And when she came out here, we 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 opened in 2010. May of 2010, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. So, May of 2010, uh, you're opening this kitchen. It's a fairly small kitchen, so you need help. So yeah. How did you find your first kind of cook? Well, I, I sold it to myself. Like, oh, tasty menu, tiny kitchen, 30 seats, this is the chef's dream. Exactly. I was like, I can do this by myself. Give me a dishwasher. I can do it <laughs> out, right? Um, man, was I wrong. You know what I mean? Um, like the first couple nights of service, we opened during restaurant week. What a fucking nightmare that was. Um, and I was able to hire on two guys, uh, at, you know, as we opened, mm-hmm. realized I wasn't going to be able to do it by myself. Yeah. Um, I hired on a guy named Todd and a guy named Anthony. Um, Anthony, I still in touch with Todd. I'm not. Um, Todd, I think you met. Yeah, yeah. Um, he works at. Uh, does he work anywhere now? I don't know. Last time works. I saw him at Salvation. He might still be there. He might still be there. But sure. uh, shout out to Anthony Guarneri. Yeah, because he fucking 
he was the level head in the kitchen. Yeah. You know, yeah. you were super hungry at the time. You knew what you wanted.